All right, so for the next couple of examples, we're gonna be looking at more using the limits of trig functions than using the definitions. So the first one is that it asks me to evaluate the following limit. <clears throat> and I'm looking at the limit as theta goes to zero of sine of four theta divided by three theta. So here's the technique that we're going to employ here is we are going to look at this four theta and we are going to multiply this guy by four divided by four. Now here's what that's going to do to, with us is that's going to give us the limit as theta approaches zero of four sine of four theta divided by it. Now three times theta times four. Remember that multiplication is commutative. So three times theta times four is actually the same as three times four theta. Now, here's the cool thing is that I have four theta here and I have four theta on the bottom. So those are gonna kind of act like my X's here. Now the last cool thing I'm gonna point out is as theta goes to zero, what are four theta and four theta also gonna to go to? Well, they'll also go to zero. So that means I can use this fact and I can say that this whole piece is going to go to one. So my limit is actually going to be four thirds times one, which would give me four thirds. All right, now on the next one, I'm taking the limit of tan of 8t divided by sine of t. Now this one, I'm kind of like, oh, I'm not super sure what to do here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to try to rewrite it using trig identities. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the limit as t goes to zero. So tangent I can rewrite as sine of 8t divided by cosine of 8t. And then sine of t, remember dividing by sine is the same as multiplying by one over sine of t. Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, all right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to multiply this by 8t divided by 8t. Now, what that's going to give me is that's going to give me the limit as t approaches zero. Now remember, sine of 8t times one times 8t, I can reorganize that just like I can reorganize the multiplication on the bottom. So that's gonna be sine of 8t divided by 8t times, and then it's going to be one over cosine of 8t times 8t divided by sine of t. All right, now here's the great thing is that this piece as t approaches zero, that's gonna be sine of zero over zero, which is going to go to one, okay? Because the inside or the inside and the bottom are both going to zero at the exact same rate. The same thing is going to happen here. That is also going to go to one. Now, if I actually plug zero in for T on cosine, cosine of zero is just one. So what I'm going to be left with is one times eight times one, which is going to give me eight. All right, now on the next one, we are going to have cosine of theta minus one divided by sine of theta. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by theta over theta. What that is going to give me is that is going to give me the limit as theta approaches zero of cosine of theta minus one divided by theta times theta divided by sine of theta. Now, if we go back up and look at our rules, I kind of used it here and didn't explain it, but if sine of x over x goes to one, what that means is that sine and the x in the denominator are changing at the same rate. So whether I have one on the top or the bottom, it's always gonna go to one. So what I have found here 
is that this is going to go to 1, and cosine of theta minus 1 is going to go to 0. So overall, this limit is going to equal 0. All right, we have two more examples. So first one is we're going to look at the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 3x divided by 5x to the third minus 4x. So again, I'm going to look at what's inside of my sign. I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. So I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 3x times 3 divided by, now on the bottom, what I'm going to do is I see an x here and an x here, so I'm going to pull those out along with this 3. And then what I'm going to be left with is 5x squared minus 4. Now, remember, because the inside and the outside are the same, that's going to go to 1. So all I have to do is evaluate this piece. So if I plug 0 in for my x here, I'm going to get 5 times 0 minus 4, which will give me negative 4 on the bottom, 3 on top. So this is going to go to negative 3 fourths. All right, so let's look at this last example. So a ladder is 10 feet long, and it rests against a vertical wall. We're going to let theta be the angle between the top of the ladder and the wall, and let x be the distance from the bottom of the ladder to the wall. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall, how fast does x change with respect to theta when theta equals pi over 3? So I don't know, so I'm going to draw a picture. <laughs> so we have our ladder right here. Okay, doot, 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 doot. I wouldn't climb it, looks dangerous. So this ladder is 10 feet here. The distance between the wall and the bottom of the ladder is x. This also makes a right triangle, which is nice. And they also said that theta would be the angle between the wall and the ladder. Okay. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to find a way to describe this using trig. So if this is a right triangle, here's what I know, is I know the hypotenuse, and I also have some information, or want to know some information, about this side x. Now since this side x is opposite that angle, I'm going to call it opposite. Now in trig, if I have theta, and I know the side opposite and the hypotenuse, well then I know sine. Sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Now I want to know how fast x changes with respect to theta, so what I want to do is I want to solve this for x. So my function x is equal to 10 times sine of theta. Now when I take the derivative, it is going to be dx over d theta equals 10 cosine of pi over 3. Okay, so the derivative of 10 sine theta is going to be 10 cosine theta, and then I plugged pi over 3 in. So my derivative is going to be 5. But 5 what? Well, x is feet, and theta was measured in, well, it's not degrees, so what do we measure theta in? We measure it in radians. So the rate at change is going to be that the ladder is going to be 5 feet away from the wall for every radian that angle increases.